Assalamu alaikum students. This is our ninth lecture of secondary computer science. In our today's video, we will continue the basic structure of C program. And we will discuss header files and some commonly used functions in C language. Now, let's start with the header files. The standard C library contains many header files like stdio.h, math.h. And this is not a complete list. There are many other header files present. And those header files are important because they contains the definitions of built-in functions. Now, built-in functions are those which are present inside those header files and they are ready to use. So if we use some specific function from those header files, then we have to include the respective header file in the program. Means the file in which that function was present. As you can see in this diagram, we are using the function printf. And printf was present in the stdio.h. This means that we have to include the stdio.h using the preprocessor directive, which we have studied in the previous lecture, hash include. So we will write down hash include stdio.h and then we will use the function printf. Now the stdio.h contains the one set of functions. Math.h contains the different set of functions. Conio.h contains the different set of functions. A header file is a file which has the extension of .h. And these files comes with a compiler. Means that when you will install the compiler in your computer, this piece of code will already be present with that compiler. And these header files are also called the library files. Now we will discuss some header files which are commonly used in C programs. So first is a standard input output header file. And as the name suggests, this file contains the functions which are used for standard input and output, like the printf and the scanf for taking the input and displaying the output. So if we are using the printf or scanf function in our program, we have to write down that header file at the top. Second is conio.h. Now conio stands for the console input output header file. And here we got some other input output functions. Now the console usually means the combination of display monitor and input device. Now, if you are using the functions like getch and getche and clear screen, then we have to include the conio.h header file in our program. The next is string.h and the string is the combination of characters means more than one character. So if we are using the functions like the get s, put s, string compare, and string copy, and many other string functions, these are present in the string header file. We have to include that file. And you can include more than one files in your program. There is no restriction. You can also use some maths function in your program like the square root, sine, cos, tangent, and power. But then you have to include the math.h header file because math.h header file contains the definitions of those functions. So these were some header files, which is the first part of our lecture today. Now we will move towards the second part that is function. While discussing the header file, we are talking about the functions. So what is a function in C language or programming? The function is a piece of code that performs a single well-defined task. Means it is going to perform 
one particular operation. And C uses the functions as the building block of its program. So the C program is built up mostly of the functions. And in C program, there are more than one functions used which are performing the particular and specific operations. So now we will see some functions which are very commonly used in C program. The first is the printf. The printf is the formatted output function. And this function is used to display the data on standard output device. Means that if you want to display something, you want to show something to the user, you will be using the printf. And it is present in the stdio.h, so you have to include this header file in your program if you are using printf function. The syntax is very important in the C language. So when you are using the printf function, you have to write down the printf, you have to put the round brackets opening and closing, you have to put the double quotes here. And inside the, these double quotations, you will write down whatever you want to display to the user. And in the end, you also have to put the semicolon. Now, the printf is a formatted output function. It is also used for displaying the data of different formats, like you can display integer or character or some uh, floating point value. So then the syntax of printf will be, first you have to write down the format specifier in the double quotations. We will study format specifier in the next chapter. You have to put a single comma here, then you have to put the variable name of which value you are displaying to the user. So it is also used for displaying the value of variable to the user. And in the end, you have to put the semicolon. So basically, whatever you write in those double quotations, that is displayed to the user. Second function is scanf, and it is also very important. It is used for taking the input from the user. So therefore it is the formatted input function. And again, it can take the data in the different formats like can get the character value, it can get the um, integer type and floating type values. The purpose of scanf is to get the value from the keyboard, the value which user is entering and store it into the variables during the execution of program. It is also present in stdio, means that you have to include this header file. The syntax of scanf is that you have to put the format specifier, which shows that with what is the data type of the variable or the value, which is this taking from the user. Then you have to put the ampersand sign here. And then you have to write down the variable in which the value will be stored. And the ampersand sign plays the role here that it points toward the memory of the variable where the value is going to be the memory of an address of the variable where the value will be stored. Third function is the clear screen and its purpose is to very simple clear the output screen. If there is any output present before your program is being executed, then it will clear that output from the screen. It is present in the conio.h header file. So if you are using the clear screen function, you have to include that header file in your program. And its syntax is very simple. You had just have to write CLR as CR and you have to put the opening and closing round brackets and then semicolon. The fourth function is the get ch and the get character. It is also input function. It is also used for taking the input, but it takes only character. And it only get a single character, the instant or the minute or moment it is typed, 
without waiting for the enter key. The scanf waits for the enter key. It is also present in the conu.h, so you have to include this header file. Its syntax is like get ch and you have to put the semicolon or the value which it is getting is stored into the variable name. You can, it is used in the both formats. That the character which it is getting, it is going to be stored in the variable name. Now, the next is, and the last one for in, in this lecture is the get CHE. It is also the get character, but the E stands for the echo means it get a single character the instant it is typed without waiting for the enter key, unlike the scanf, which waits for the enter key. And echo here means that the character which you are typing, it will also be displayed or showed on the screen. Now it is also present in the conu.h and you have to include that header file if you are using get CHE character and its syntax is similar to the get ch. That you can write it simply like get che, or if you want to store the value which the user is entering, then you have to write down the variable name equals to get che, and the character which user has entered will be stored in that particular variable name, which is of, which should be the character as well. So this was our lecture today, and it is very important one, the structure of C program. I hope that you have understood it well, and we will also practice it in the practicals. So thank you for your attention.